Now, if you go to the right, you can see, as we mentioned, that this is an entire uh, VMware environment. So you can see ESXi, you can see vSAN storage, you can see NSX for networking and security, and of course, all the powerful enterprise capabilities of those products, things like micro-segmentation, things like vSAN flash storage. And because it's a service, of course, we're making sure that uh, all of our latest innovations are always available here, and we're taking care of the houses of doing things like patching them. Okay, can we use it now? We've got capacity, let's do something. Alright, so let's, let's do something with it. So, uh, so if you also notice on the left-hand side here, uh, you can see a few environments that we've previously spun up, uh, one in Oregon and one in Virginia. Those are VMware cloud environments. And at the top, you can see a Denver. And Denver is our own on-prem private cloud. Okay. So what you're seeing here is a single logical view of uh, this customer's private cloud in Denver. Uh, as well as their public cloud environments in Ireland, Oregon. And, so we've linked know. these together. We've linked these so together. A consolidated view, you know, several hundred VMs running there in Denver, so a nice little private cloud. Looks good, looks good. And this, this is really, you know, Pat, what enables uh, the hybrid use cases that we talked about before, right? The single view, uh, I can manage these envir environments completely consistently. Uh, so now let's take a look at uh, Denver, and let's show just one of those, uh, one of those hybrid use cases. Let's look at the new said. So uh, let's go into Denver, and you can see there's a bunch of applications running here. Uh, let's get started by going into this billing app, and we've decided that we want to migrate an ETL service within this billing app from our private cloud into the AWS cloud. So you click on this service, you can see uh, all of the characteristics of that and all the, uh, the policies we've set for that application. So you can see it's part of a few NSX uh, micro segments. You can see we've got a storage policy set that it needs high IOPS per uh, storage. Uh, for, for the service, and now let's go ahead and let's move it. Okay, and that's uh, vMotion. Of course, right? Of course. Okay, now, how many of you use vMotion? Yeah, like everybody, yeah, so let's vMotion already. All right, so let's see how vMotion okay. works. So uh, let's get going. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna click, let's move this thing. We'll go to the standard uh, vMotion wizard. Uh, you can see where we wanna move it to, so we're gonna move it to our VMware cloud uh, in Oregon, and we're gonna move it to a cluster there. Okay. And now we're just going to go through the wizard. Uh, we'll select that uh, we want to maintain the storage policies. We want to maintain the network and security policies. Okay, so all that's coming with. All that's coming with okay. it. And looks, uh, looks good. So let's finish. Great. And now you see it's moving. Okay. The bottom of the screen. There. So and the service is still active. So yeah, VMotion, right? you know, continues to be seamless availability. All the great things about VMotion have now been applied to this environment. So the end users are actually able to continue to access this service while we're moving it. No application replatforming, not a single line of code needed to be written. And of course, all those uh, those uh, policies that we talked about before are maintained now on the AWS cloud. Okay, this is cool. This is good, Mark. But anything else? Cool. So let's, let's go back to the slide for one second. Okay. Uh, so just uh, just quickly, how we, how we made this possible uh, is what we did is we leveraged the Direct Connect te technology from AWS to link the customer's on-prem environment uh, with their uh, VMware cloud on AWS. And then we linked the two vCenters across that environment, as well as leveraged NSX to seamlessly extend the network. And that's really what made that hybrid use case we showed there, uh, made, made, made that possible. Okay, so show me more. Great. Uh, so, so what we showed so far really is all the uh, existing capabilities of VMware are now available on the AWS cloud. But we can actually even do more than that. Because our software is now running on an elastic infrastructure, we can begin to do things that were never before possible. So uh, let's, let's show an example of that. Uh, so here we're showing DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduling. Mm -hmm. Another meat and potatoes kind of VMware service. How many of you are DRS users? Yeah, lots of people. You know, this is something that everybody is uh, taking advantage of. Yeah, everyone's very familiar with this. Uh -huh. You know, what it does is balances workloads across the cluster to ensure great application performance while optimizing the utilization of the underlying physical resources. But what happens if we continue to load that cluster up? At some point, we run out of capacity. Right? Uh -huh. So let's go back to the demo. So, uh, so what you can see here is the DRS cluster on the VMware cloud on AWS. Uh, you can see this cluster is overloaded. We have a little warning there. So there's a wow. power out okay. So what we're going to do now yeah. is turn on uh, a new capability, a technical preview of a new capability we're showing called Elastic DRS that is enhancing DRS to take advantage of the fact that the AWS infrastructure underneath is elastic. So we're going to turn that on. And uh, if you look closely, you'll see this kicking into action. On the left-hand side, you'll see the number of nodes in that cluster is going to increase, should increase from six to seven. There it went. 
So we just increase the size of that cluster. At the bottom, DRS is taking over and it's rebalancing those workloads across that larger cluster. And now the upper right, uh, you can see that, that that cluster is now going from imbalanced to balanced. So essentially, AWS has become essentially an almost infinite pool of resources that we can DRS across. Absolutely. So wow. we can expand it, we can contract it as needed. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, we'll go back to it. services in conjunction with their applications that are running in this VMware cloud environment. And so what we've done is we've made it very easy to connect those services together very seamlessly from a customer perspective. Uh, so you can imagine the example we showed, we could connect that ETL service to uh, Glacier for long-term storage. We could connect it to AWS Redshift to do some advanced data warehousing on top. All of the AWS capabilities are now available natively in that VMware cloud environment truly enabling a whole new set of hybrid cloud use cases. Wow, this is impressive, Mark. So the full SDBC stack extended, you know, new innovations like Elastic DRS, access to the full suite of AWS services as well. How impressive could that be? But one last question before I let you go. Yes. What's it available? So it will be available in mid-2017. This GA is mid-2017, so we're really looking forward to that. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Thank Great you. Great job.